Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 14. Thoughts. This episode is called Love in the Time of Cholera. I mean Hydra. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers in this video for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers and I implore you to do so. And then there's some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So let's dive in to the episode. So yeah, we open on Grant and 33 or Kara as she identifies herself by the end of this episode and yeah like at first it legit looks like oh I guess they are just taking a break they're just you know gonna have something to eat at this place and I just forgot I just realized I there we go light ring on but yeah you know they were actually just waiting for that guy who could fix the the mask and yeah, she uses the term fix my face and it actually it means the thing that it's supposed to. And yeah, they talk about Sky being more like the Hulk than any other Avenger. And let's see. Yeah, and, and May says she has no idea how to deal with Sky, which yeah, really, you know, that was, like, she did honestly think that the whole Zen thing was going to be enough. And it wasn't. It actually kind of made things worse. It just, it redirected. But, yeah, so, very clever to, it's it's a good, you know, way to, to have it, you know, it would be kind of boring if it turned out, oh, never mind, the team has the answer just like that. And... I feel like there's the the so the doctor fixes the face and then you know she mimics his face and he says something like reminds me of my Berkeley days she would look better with a woman's face something that just I don't know um, it feels transphobic to me not really a fan of that and yeah they talk about you know I mean if you want your own face back you could turn off the mask and she is not having it like you know grabs him by the throat and yeah you know she it is downright upsetting to her the the idea because of the the scar and yeah you know if she could find an old photo she could have her face back but they you know they're not you know, they're not sure how to how to get their hands on that. That is dark, man. Seriously, though, loving this thing of, like, dark man, but, you know, more high-tech, and the, the, yeah, just big fan. Always, always loved dark man since the moment I first saw that movie. And this thing of, you know, she can't have her old face back because of scarring, but she can look like other people and she's going to get revenge. Absolutely love that. And... Yeah, we meet the the leaders of Old Shield, and they talk about transparency, and always love seeing edward james almost in something so glad he's still working like you could understand like he was born in 47 you know he's he's getting up in years but he's still inc incredible actor so yeah really glad that he's still acting or at least was when this was shot and yeah um you know, Lance is saying, there is no way that Bobby is okay with this, and the door opens and Bobby comes in. Which is, yeah, Joss Whedon in a nutshell. Very much his sense of humor. And, yeah, you know, uh, Gonzalez points out, you know, Izzy helped me, and she would still be alive if not for Colson. They are making a lot of sense. And... <laughs> The sky says, why do I feel like old yeller? And yeah, it is like, how do you know that reference? Like, you know, but yeah, apparently Fitz wants a dog. He used to want a monkey, but he's realized that that's probably not the most realistic. I'm getting a monkey? 
and let's see. Yeah, and we learn the backstory of Lola, why Coulson doesn't let anybody else touch it. And it is, you know, just to be clear, I'm the Corbett in this story, right? And 33 poses as, uh, yeah, poses, she changes her face to look like Sky in order to repay Grant. And I really like this twist that Grant now, you know, seemingly does not want Sky. And, you know, I, I appreciate that it is addressed that, no, he did used to want her, but then she shot him and left him to die, you know. And, yeah, really appreciate that it does not, they don't end up doing that. It's, you know, I, I get that, I understand that some people like the idea of, having sex with someone, pretending they're someone else, but it's always felt really gross to me. Just, you know, I get it. Sometimes it's difficult to recover if if you've had your heart broken or something, but you gotta. You gotta move on. You gotta find someone else. Or, you know, or just be alone. That's also fine, but don't... Don't make someone pretend they're your ex. To, yeah, and yeah, really, I really appreciate the the conversation between Grant and Thirty Three, where she says, you know, Kara says, you know, who I was, that's gone. Whitehall wiped it away, you know, and and Grant says he used to be a shell, and I appreciate his his retconning of this is a comic adaptation so you know yeah let's let's retcon how he you know he met his family and you know just everyone got to to express their emotions and now he feels so much better just yeah and yeah they're going to grab Sunil Bakshi be because he was the you know yeah he he was the one who got Kara to Whitehall. And, you know, they can't do anything to Whitehall. And, yeah, 33 poses as... She has an... Yeah, Carla Talbot. Uh, you know, Glenn Talbot's wife. Very clever, you know, that is... Yeah, you know, if you're not ready for the nano mask. That's that's going to work, you know. She looks exactly like, and you know, she wore a, a big jacket, which you just think, oh yeah, she was just outside, you know. It's maybe it's cold out or something, but no, it was, she was hiding a uniform under there. And yeah, that was very 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 clever that she she changes into one of the other, off you know yeah someone at at the base so that people aren't like, oh hey, you're you're Glenn Talbot's wife. Let you know, right this way or something. You know, she changes to someone who has full access to the Yeah. And and Talbot apparently spends time in his office talking about the best kind of lawnmower. And I appreciate that, like, you know, she, she, like, mm -hmm, yeah, it's an interesting, sir. And she's about to walk away, and he's like, no, you don't understand. Like, this is, this is a masterpiece of lawn mowing technology. And she's like, oh, my God, again? You know, just very, very funny. And, yeah, Coulson has taken Sky to this, you know, to, to a place that Fury had where, you know, Steve Rogers was here for a while after he defrosted. And it is a cabin in the woods, so I'm really hoping she's not going to find a tape player that's going to raise the spirits from, that are going to take over people. And, yeah, she gets the, the gloves that are going to disable her powers, which, you know, we heard Gemma earlier talking about, you know, are you sure about this kind of thing, so, yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and, and yeah, Glenn, you know, 
the real Carl Letal, but calls Glenn, and he's like, oh, no, not this again. You know, he, he did see the, you know, it's not his first rodeo with a nano mask, so... Yeah, and he you know, he gets all the, the women into the, the one room. You know, very clever. And and I appreciate they keep cutting to the one that the Carla Carla Cara used to look like. So we're like, Oh, he's gonna he's gonna catch her. But in reality she was just like just a little nervous about it. Not because she was secretly someone else. You know, that's it's a it's an off-putting situation, you know, she's, I mean, we think it's Kara standing there, oh, crap, they're gonna, you know, I'm gonna be uncovered, but in reality, she's standing there like, oh, I can't believe one of, you know, there's a, there's a spy here, and she looks exactly like one of the women I work with, you know, that's gonna put you off, obviously, so, just, yeah, very, very clever, and, yeah, May talks to Mac, and you know, at first there's like, oh, did she does she, is she, does she know? Did she realize? But no, apparently, you know, she pretends at least to be believe what he says about Hunter. <laughs> and Glenn, you know, he's he's going through the these these women, and you know, one of them, I believe your daughter goes to the same same school as my boy, and she's like, I don't have a daughter, sir. That's exactly right, you know, right answer. Because the spy is going to be like, you know what, little, um, she's, yeah, she's great. And your son, they have such a nice friendship, yes. Uh-huh, did, did he buy it, you know? But, yeah, obviously the real one is not going to do that. She's going to be like, what are you talking about? I don't have a daughter and you know this. But then, you know, he talks, he asks the other one and he asks... When was the last time I got your name right? And she says, never. I mean, points for self-awareness, I guess. That he, he is aware that he always mispronounces her name. And, yeah, you know, this is not your face. And he's like, you know, and she's um, General, please stop. <laughs> Which just, yeah... You know, they, they did, they beat the Mission Impossible franchise to that gag, but that one did eventually do it as well. I, yeah, honestly, if you have a perfect face mask technology in your franchise, I feel like at least once someone's gonna, like, gotta grab the, the face and think, ah, this is the right, ah, oh, crap, that's not the right one. And, let's see, yeah, you know, it's made clear there was you know i had the feeling but it's made clear no you know kara is now does now look like this other you know and for a second you know grant is like oh crap have i been oh okay it is kara and yeah you know bakshi at first actually thinks oh you know she's here to, to rescue me we're we're good you know the whole thing is but then Grant appears, and Bakshi tries to to reactivate the mind control for for Kara, and she smacks him. Very satisfying. And Glenn mistakes the real Carla for the fake Kara, or the real Kara, whatever. And yeah, I I appreciate that they do make you know she's not like oh okay this is a thing okay I'm gonna, no she's upset. She's, uh, yeah, not a big fan of the fact that they turn it into a joke later. Ah, oh, I'm going to be up, up to my ears in edible arrangements. But, yeah, you know, that is a very, it, it's, you know, making it more intense. And, yeah, Bobby and Lance talk about the situation and, you know, you have the thing with, you know, I'm leaving. You know, you are. Are you gonna try to stop me? No, but everyone else will. And yeah, very cool as he fights his way out, and he does manage to get to one of the things. And and great reveal on it being an aircraft carrier, and like you know the big, like the camera pulls out and we see the the whole 
you know, and that is that is quite clever. You know, you would think he, it would be impossible for him to to escape from there. And yeah, Fitzsimmons talk about Sky and yeah, uh, you know the the um, they're continuing to to it it is really this thing of you know Simmons changed when she saw first Fitz change and now Sky change, you know and yeah it's I I really appreciate you know she. She felt like a very non-threatening character in season one. I've, I I liked her character from the get-go, but I really appreciate that there is like it is it is kind of dark that yeah you know this is what happens when someone she knows really well changes in a way she she can't really deal with it. And yeah, neither May nor Coulson believe Mac. Uh, when it comes to, to Lance, and they're going to act on it. And, let's see, yeah, and, and Bobby talks about, you know, Coulson keeping secrets, that's the threat. We should remove that threat. And, you know, well, you know, in 12 hours, Hunter's going to be back. I only need six. So yeah, really, really psyched to see what's going to happen next episode. And we see 33 reveal her real face and, you know, Kara meets Grant for real. And yeah, you know, they've been working on breaking Bakshi. It seems like it might have worked. And, you know, he's like, will my compliance be rewarded? And she's like, it's not going to change anything. <laughs> so yeah, really great episode. And let's see. Yeah, so the the IMDb um, trivia for the episode. Let's see. Ah, uh, yeah. Sky says she has ended up on the DL disabled list at the time of the first broadcast. This term was used by Major League Baseball for players who were injured and temporarily removed from the roster. It was unique to MLB in that all other sports leagues used the term injured list. MLB changed to using that term in 2019. To know this term and use the common shorthand abbreviation DL indicates this guy is more than a casual fan of baseball in the U.S. And let's see... And, uh, right, I feel like that might be a spoiler. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that. Just someone noted that there is a, there's a connection between Kirk Acevedo, who plays Agent Calderon, and Robert Gonzalez, played by Andrew James Olmos in something else. Right, and yeah, the, the novel Love in the Time of Cholera is by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And yeah, um, I swear I almost did actually do a reference. I, just, I guess I feel like I've been referencing Pulp Fiction enough recently that I don't want to, I don't want people to get sick of it. Uh, but yeah, the episode's opening scene in the diner contains references to the opening diner scene in Pulp Fiction. Ward orders pumpkin pancakes. The name of Tim Roth's character is Pumpkin. Let's see. And yeah, and Warden Agent 33 pull their guns at the same time, start yelling like the couple in Pulp Fiction. When they corner the doctor, he pulls out his wallet, offers it to them. Or in the film, Pumpkin and Honey Bunny go around collecting all the diners and patrons' wallets, including Jules Winfield's and in the MCU, Samuel Jackson plays Nick Fury. So yeah. And right, and he plays Jules Winfield in the movie. And let's see, I think huh, this is another one that does not have a lot of dialogue in the memorable quote section for the episode. And let's see. Right, I like the yeah, Hunter. Talking about, you know, 
So that that's what this is about. You guys don't want Colson in charge. I'd be the first to admit the guy's not perfect. Sometimes chews with his mouth open, tends to hog the mic on karaoke night. But other than that, he's not so bad, really. But, yeah. Um, I think there is, in fact, someone, uh, you know, going around with a nano mask impersonating me. So if you see me someplace I'm not supposed to be, I'm not there.